war is something that's been around since the dawn of civilization. Initially, a hunter-gatherer society focused on survival. But as human civilization advanced, war became a part of life, the added part of human existence. Namaste, hello, and welcome to the Core Questions by the Times of India. I'm Priyanka Deo. From hunters, gatherers, discoverers, and inventors, to innovators and conquerors, the ambitious, and at times, the cruel. Conflicts and combat became the very nature of human existence, and wars have largely defined the course of human history. It's been estimated that there have been over 14,500 recorded wars between 3,500 BCE to the late 1900 CE. That's over three millennia. The earliest known and recorded war was fought 13,400 years ago, in 2700 BC. Now, wars are not mere scuffles over food or over a female. Anthropologically, it can be defined as a battle of conflict between two groups of the same species. But we can't just justify group fights as full-on wars. The distinctive factor here is tactics or strategies. From the use of mind games like misdirections, attack, formations, retreating, to circling back. To use a surprise weapon like the Trojan horse like the Greeks did, or the Brahmastra in Hindu mythology. The devices, methods, and weapons of modern-day warfare have revolutionized far too quickly. Believe it or not, we are already in our black mirror future. France is experimenting with enhanced soldiers. It's trying to augment human strength, endurance, and combat effectiveness to fight their wars. Whereas China is developing killer bees, automated, small, agile, and interconnected drones to overwhelm enemies or targets. Now with the dawn of artificial intelligence or AI, battlefields have advanced as well. Take these for example. Iran's top scientist, Mohsin Fakhrizadeh, was assassinated remotely by an AI-assisted killing machine in broad daylight. This was in 2021, and the confirmation, far from acceptance, took days. This was the first high-profile assassination straight out of a science fiction Hollywood film. The operation was led by Mossad, which is Israel's intelligence agency, in collaboration with America's very own CIA. The United States killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri with the help of a drone in Afghanistan last year as well. Iran's most powerful military commander, General Qasim Soleimani, has been killed by a U.S. airstrike at Baghdad airport, a significant shift from sending the Marine Corps to kill Osama bin Laden over a decade ago. Sci-fi nightmares of a robot apocalypse aside, autonomous weapons are a very real threat to humanity. Experts explain how the emerging arms race could be humanity's last. The targeted assassination via drone strikes have become progressively normalized with the help of official secrecy, government propaganda, and press coverage. I say this with a pinch of salt because the United Nations Convention debated the question of banning autonomous weapons. The UN Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons meets once every five years for a review. In fact, they meet to discuss the world's cruelest weapons used and decide if they should be banned. In December 2021, they did not reach a consensus on the ban of the autonomous weapon system. And almost four years later, use of drone wars have become an easy narrative for targeted killings as well as lethal autonomous weapons known by the acronym of LAWs, which are trendy. Ironic that the acronym is LAWS. Now, these are not your Terminator-style robots. On record, five world leaders are investing in the development of autonomous weaponry. The United States, China, Russia, South Korea, and the EU. This is the majority of the developed world, by the way. Each pouring billions of dollars into this arms race. These weapons can survey their surroundings, identify their targets, and independently choose to attack those targets on the basis of sophisticated algorithms but artificial intelligence is being added incrementally to existing systems as well, so that drones can fly on their own and target things on their own and kill things on their own. The problem is, there is little regulation, at least for now.
The technological developments in drone warfare are unfolding in a broader context, especially after the Russian invasion. More countries are getting their hands on the new age sophisticated and automated weapons for the sole purpose of defending themselves. And Ukraine has become an unofficial testing ground of sorts. From strike drones to weaponized DIY hobbyist drones to loitering munitions, these are drones with bombs that literally loiter around their target and explode on them. Even for Taiwan, drones are key to their war against China. India has also entered the race of drone warfare. In our context, drones are imperative for defense and strike. Given the two specific neighbors in the north and northwest, the drones have been essential along the high altitudes for surveillance. Up until now, the United States has been shying away from sharing its technology with other countries. But hot commodities like drones are now very openly and regularly used by Russia as well as China. In fact, Beijing has become the world's biggest exporter of armed unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs. So the United States has eased its restrictions. Apart from its close allies like Ukraine and Taiwan, America has opened its arms and pockets to others. It's providing India with state-of-the-art drones, and not just any drones. These are weaponized with high-tech surveillance apparatuses called hunter-killer drones. The MQ-9B Sky and Sea Guardians, along with other high-level sharing of jet technology. But the deal dates back to 2017, when Prime Minister Modi held a meeting with former President Donald Trump. India was the first non-treaty partner to be offered with these drone systems. While the negotiations took years, the Trump administration finalized the sale of armed drones in 2019 to India. However, the global watchers claim that Pakistan is quote-unquote well ahead of India as far as drone technology is concerned. Nevertheless, India is catching up like in every other sector, and over the next 15 years, the Indian Army plans to induct UAVs down to the battalion level, with a total turnover of around 120 to 150 billion rupees by 2026. The recent deal inked during PM Modi's US visit in June 2023 is worth over 3 billion US dollars. The deal includes 31 high-altitude, long-endurance UAVs, of which the Navy will get 15 Sea Guardian drones, while the Army and the Indian Air Force will get eight each of the land version, called Sky Guardian. With extended range and weapons-carrying capabilities, these drones are expected to be instrumental for India's border defenses. Thanks for watching the core questions by The Times of India. Please like, share and subscribe. Until next time, this is Priyanka Deo signing off. Namaste.